Hornbird are market leaders in business automation. The team has been working with local government, utilities and big corporations for over 30 years. Formbird Fleet joins a growing suite of business applications that leverage Formbird's low-code development platform. Drawing on their vast experience in asset and works management, Formbird reimagined fleet management from the ground up to deliver a software-as-a-service solution already managing 6,000 assets across Australia. Formbird Fleet connects organisations with their data, keeping everyone on the same page. Formbird Fleet is a next generation fleet information management solution. The following is a presentation by Formbird CEO and founder Mark Hosking. This is an overview designed to give you a basic understanding of the functionality of Formbird Fleet. If you would like to know more and would like us to address any specific needs you have, please get in touch with us via our website. The link is in the description along with an index for the video so you can jump ahead to the bits that interest you most. Essentially what, what we'll run through is we'll go through the sort of the basic structure of, of the application almost like a mini training session just so you get a good feel for the, for the kind of what it's all about. Naturally won't go to every little nook and cranny but at least it'll give you a good feel at the sort of higher level and, and, and the, 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 the principles behind it. Formbird Fleet has three elements central to its operation. They are key to your understanding of the functionality. We call these elements containers. Here's Mark explaining. The three major sort of entities that live within the system uh, are the asset, and that contains all of the, the primary asset details. So that's the, the, the profile of the vehicle and obviously links back to everything like the, the work that's been done and all everything else. We then have what we term a request. And a request is, if you like, the starting point of any doing something or problem solving. And the request is, is really from a kind of business point of view, I need to do something. I need to fix something. I need to service something. I need to deliver some sort of service. So it starts as a request. And then we have work orders. And they're the other sort of key item. And the key item of a work order is the fact that a work order really um, is where we record activity. So a request might have one or more work orders and we discreetly break those work orders up into um, sort of functional things. So we'll have a service work order versus a repair work order versus fuel delivery work order versus, say, a, um, an accident reporting. You know, the accident reporting work order will have all the details of insurance details, um, you know, authorization, approvals, all the rest of it. So each of the work orders, and we, we sort of do keep adding work orders that, you know, in Formbird, we try and keep everything um, very specific. So things like a work order will have common data, but then they'll have specific data to the process you're trying to capture. So that again, we're trying to minimise the amount of data and also make it more relevant to what the user is trying to do. The application is mobile native, if you like, in the sense that it's the same application that you'll see here that runs on all devices. And we have customers running them across all devices. Bundaberg are running them on tablets primarily. They do use a few phones and in the office they use desktops. So, so they're using all, all three devices and that's quite common for a lot of our users. A lot of our users will also just go two, which will be phone and, and, the, and the notebook desktop. So they've kind of got the, the differentiation between like a normal you know, Facebook user, <laughs> they'll use their desktop at work and get the big data entry and then they'll use a phone for, for quick data entry. So, and that's, that's, that's done through what, what we call um, responsive design, but it's, it falls under what Google calls progressive design. Um, and, it, and the progressive design um, of our platform uh, gives a whole lot of capabilities, about 17 different capabilities. One of them is that responsive design. It's what's called a web app. So we can actually do things like um, operate offline as an app. So it actually, you can actually cache data, probably not so relevant for you guys because you're primarily Metro and, you know, pretty good coverage and all the rest of it. But for some of our regional customers, it's, it's, it's more important. So against a, um, an asset, we, you know, we have a summary of the secondary details, but against the primary details, we'll have things like the overall classification and that'll be common across all assets that's kind of like who's responsible for it what department manages it, what workshop uh, uh, works on it um you know who's the the section leader who's the department head and all the rest of that sort of thing in terms of responsible regard and that, that doesn't matter whether the assets are whippersnipper or a, a grader it's, it's irrelevant 
Um, you'll have allocation, so you'll allocate or potentially allocate. And of course, if you don't use something, it just means it's not used. It doesn't mean the system doesn't work. It just means obviously the flow on. So not everything I'll show you, you'll necessarily use, but it's kind of there to either grow into or, you know, or use. The fuel details and fuel details that will be specific and that's 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 particularly you know that's important for the fuel uploader so if you you know when we import fuel so the fuel upload will be used to make sure there's no conflicts you know the type the the, the fuel type the uh capacity of the the tanks um etc are all used you know and used against that the fuel detail so that's that's sort of important for the fuel uploading And we use the fuel uploading for the scheduled maintenance as well. So that'll kick off all the scheduled maintenance um, based on consumption. And we try and get any of the consumption details in terms of, you know, you know a, a scheduled service will be based on date, time plus consumption. So it'll be, you know, recurring six months, three months, whatever you put down um, for the various items. Um, but it'll also be on consumption, 10,000 Ks, 20,000 Ks, or what have you, or 1,000 hours or what have you. And we try and get that data from whatever. So that can come from vehicle tracking, that can come from fuel upload, can come from the daily driver check sheet. Whatever's kind of giving us that consumption detail will trigger and will go into the scheduling of that. Then you'll have physical details. And the one thing we've done is we've compacted the physical details of the high level asset down a little bit now. And what we've done is we've, I mean, we still, and, and also you'll notice that imaging is used throughout the application quite extensively. And Bundaberg's using this very successfully as well um, in terms of just detailing. And they're also using it for repairs. So, you know, they had a, had a major incident a week or two ago and, and the guys were actually able to manage the incident in the office totally just through using, you know, reporting the the, the incident and, and, and getting images and they didn't have to send people out on site to make the next round of decisions. So images are all used throughout the whole thing, photos. Thank you for watching. To view the next part of the Formbird fleet demonstration, click on the video. If you missed the first part, there's a link in the description. And please contact us via our website if you would like a personal demonstration.